Hi, check this out. I'm very excited about this. This is a Belovo Accutron Space View watch. Space age technology right out of the 1960s. Isn't it just gorgeous? This particular model is actually almost uh, 50 years old. It's a 1968 model or what's called the M8 uh, model. Accutron Space View. Now Accutron are an American uh, watch manufacturer, a very old one, and uh, they make a lot, they still make these Accutron uh, watches and they come in many, many different flavors. But this one is my absolute favorite. It's called the uh, Space View because you can see the mechanism down inside. And yes, it does look unlike any watch you've ever seen. This is actually the world's first transistorized watch and the original model came out in uh, 1960, the orig original Accutron model, 1960, and it uses a tuning fork mechanism. It, it's not a quartz crystal uh, watch, it uses a tuning fork that ap actually uh, resonates at 360 hertz and you can see two coils in there which actually uh, keep that uh, tuning fork oscillating and there's a single transistor oscillator in there and you might be able to actually see the um, components down in there they're just individually soldered to like little tags and there's actually a single transistor in there the first model in 1960, actually, or oh, for the first five years, up until about 1965, used a germanium transistor, and then they switched over to an NPN transistor inside this thing. But it's the remarkable tuning fork. You can see the tuning fork in there like that. You can see the two arms of the tuning fork here, one there and one there. And you can see how they're actually welded onto the uh, metal that goes over the coil there. So the entire metal part there is free to move back and forth across the coil on either side and there's a gap down in the middle there. And the most remarkable thing about this uh, tuning fork mechanism is that it was uh, super duper accurate at the time. It was the world's most accurate watch uh, down to about like a couple of seconds per day. And that was that beat the pants off any mechanical watch at the time, uh, basically until uh, quartz uh, crystal oscillator uh, watches came along. So these were heavily used in by uh, NASA for the space program and Accu. Tron uh, tuning forkers on an instrument um, that was left on the moon by Apollo 11, uh, for example, and dozens and dozens of other uh, space missions during the 1960s uh, relied on an, a tuning for an Accutron tuning fork mechanism uh, as for their timekeeping source. It was basically the most accurate clock oscillator available. Now you can see this is actually the M8 model, uh, stainless steel backing, it's 18 karat uh, gold plated this one. It is waterproof, um, but yeah, after 50 years, unless you've had it uh, you know, properly um, serviced and everything else, yeah, you shouldn't actually be using it in there. Uh, we've got the battery, and one of the most interesting aspects of it is actually, you might notice that there's no crown. On the outside of this. How do you set it? Well, you actually flip up that little lever like that and bingo, you can turn the hands like that. Beautiful. Now, none of these uh, Belovo watches actually, uh, the Accutrons contained a uh, calendar in them. The mechanism, uh, would that would have been too complex for the mechanism inside this to uh, handle a calendar uh, function, but they were super duper accurate the world's most accurate timepiece, basically, um, in the 60s. And the tuning fork mechanism uh, was immune to uh, shock and vibration and things like that. If you sh really shocked it hard enough, it might upset it uh, for a second, but basically it would uh, just keep going. But there are two remarkable things about this uh, tuning fork that uh, I think make this watch pretty unique. And the first one is the second hand. Look, it just continually sweeps like that. It is absolutely gorgeous. It does not go tick tock, tick tock. It does not tick in second intervals. It is a continuous sweep movement. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it gets that by way of the tuning fork uh, mechanism itself is then a direct um, drive through those uh, cogs there that actually drive the sweep second hand and then the minutes and then the hours hand. So that's how it's able to get that gorgeous sweep on it. Oh, fabulous. And the second remarkable thing about the Accutron mechanism is that it doesn't tick 
it hums. And you put it up to your ear. Oh, that's beautiful, really. So these Accutron watches were the world's best timepiece in the 60s. Uh, it, it used to be the official watch given to, you know, foreign dignitaries by the US government as, you know, a show of our remarkable technology, I guess. Um, but yeah, the world's most accurate watch, of course, completely supplanted by um, you know, cheap ass $2 quartz crystal uh, watches, which came out after that. But up until that time, Wow, these were the duck's guts. And you'll notice that my one is actually in remarkable condition. And, you know, all of the uh, silk screening on the front glass is all uh, still there. And the original hands with the uh, luminescent uh, dials on them are still there. And, yeah, it's just very first-class condition for a, uh, basically, what is a 50-year-old watch. Now, this is not the original band on it. This is a uh, Spiegel uh, third-party band. A pretty, you know, a reminiscent of the era, though. So uh, this isn't the original one, but it does complement it very well. And the Accutron mechanism is uh, known as the 214 mechanism. And as I said, it came in many different types. Uh, mostly, they were not the see-through one like this Space View. There's many different versions. There's many different fake ones out there, by the way, with fake hands and fake glass and all sorts of things. You've got to be um, quite careful if you're a, a collector of these things and, uh, you know, trying to, if you bought one that's, uh, you know, been refurbished or something like that, it may may not have all the genuine parts but I'm led to believe that my one is still all the genuine business and for those watch aficionados wondering how big this is it is actually a very small face it's about uh, 34 millimeters across and I've got a really small wrist and yeah it still looks fairly small on my wrist but isn't that Gorgeous. Now it runs on a modern uh, 387 type battery, but it's got a plastic ring in there to do that. And uh, modern batteries are uh, one point, the silver oxide ones, the 1.5 uh, volt ones can actually uh, cause an issue with the uh, coil wasn't wound and designed for that higher voltage. It was designed for one point older 1.35 volt uh, batteries. So that can be an issue if you're uh, trying to replace these. So you can actually get these watches uh, modified with a diode uh, in series with the coil to actually uh, drop that voltage. So um, I'm not actually sure if this one has the diode modification or not though. Now unfortunately I don't have the uh, correct tool to open this. I could make one or jury rig one but I've heard that if you don't know how to take these apart properly you can actually damage them. Not, not just the back of course but the internals. Um, so yeah I'm not going to do that yet. I haven't done the uh, research required to uh, uh, do that properly yet but thankfully we don't have to because there's an awesome web page which I'll link down below which has not only all the internal uh, high-res uh, photos but it also has the uh, circuit diagram as well and a three a cool 3d uh, diagram of the mechanism and why it's so different let's take a look now, absolutely full credit to the author of these uh, th awesome 3D models, R. Uh, Berker Vissus. Um, it, it's quite an old website, but I'll link it in down below. It has a ton of information, everything you could possibly want to know about the Belovo Accutrons, the mechanisms, the uh, calibration, the rephasing of the coils and the batteries and the how all the mechanisms work and uh, servicing and everything. It's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, on the left-hand side here, you can see a typical... Uh, mechanical watch of the 1960s era. I'm not sure if they're simpler these days, probably not by a huge amount um, and they're quite complex they use your traditional balance wheel and the hairspring and all sorts of stuff and but compare that to the right of the Accutron far simpler with its uh, tuning fork there which then and then it's got some reduction uh, gears and everything else and I won't ex pretend to know about all the mechanical details of all that sort of stuff and it uh, vibrates um, vi by, via way of the coils in there um, that uh, and the transistor oscillator that uh, keeps it going at the mechanical resonant frequency of uh, 360 hertz of the tuning fork and it was far simpler and that's also how you get the gorgeous sweep hand that we saw before as well so ah oh, it's just beautiful design i love it
And the other remarkable thing about the Accutron mechanism is that it wasn't really affected by the accuracy of it wasn't affected by uh, the friction of the wheels and the lubrication and the servicing and all that sort of stuff as uh, mechanical watches are much more susceptible to that in terms of uh, accuracy. So the Accutron was much more reliable mechanism. And the actual tuning fork uh, metal itself was made out of what's called uh, nice span C which has a very low uh, temperature coefficient of expansion so yeah yeah, basically temperature had almost no effect on the accuracy of the Accutron. And if we have a look at the schematic here, once again, this wasn't done by me. This is done by the uh, guy on the website here. And uh, you can see on the left-hand side was the original uh, circuit from 1960 to about 1965, I believe, which used a, a, a germanium uh, PNP transistor, AY1117, for those playing log at home. Um, and you can see on the right-hand side, which is what's in, inside my one, the M8, um, from about 1965 onwards, they switched over to an NPN silicon uh, type uh, transistor. And you'll notice that the batteries um, they've got those uh, back to front there and you can see that there's basically uh, two coils two drive coils D1 and D2 and you saw those uh, inside the mechanism uh, itself there inside the little uh, cups which go out which attach to the uh, tuning fork and there's a feedback coil in there as well I'm not sure where the uh, feedback coil is in the whole scheme of things but it basically is a resonant uh, single transistor resonant oscillator circuit. The resonant frequency is not dependent upon the R and C values in there. The component values is dependent upon the actual uh, physical resonant frequency of the tuning fork itself. All right, let's see if we can pick up the beautiful humming sound from this. I'm not sure if we will, but we'll give it a try. I've got my wireless mic strapped to it uh, inside my uh, flight case that I uh, have for my cameras for sight filming and stuff like that. I'll close it up and it should be fairly silent. Let's give it a bell. Now if we actually feed the output into a scope, we can take a look at the uh, spectrum here and see what we get. It is quite a noisy uh, waveform, so you do have to like clean it up even in that uh, acoustic little, or oh, my pathetic attempt at an acoustic uh, chamber there. And um, the dominant uh, frequency here is 100 hertz, so um, I, that might be coming from the 50 hertz pick up I don't know what's like double I don't know what's going on there anyway um, that dominates but if we slide this along ta-da 360 hertz center frequency we've got a peak there and that's spot on to our tuning fork frequency that we uh, expect from this thing it works at 360 hertz it's a physical property of the tuning fork there and yep you guessed it it's bang on they don't call it an Accutron for nothing. You can see our waveform there, it's pretty crusty. Even if I don't talk, it's yeah, if I give it a bang, bang. There we go. <laughs> I tap on the case. Um, it, it, you know, it's still crusty, but hey, our FFT bought that out and we can actually go in there and we can uh, clean this up as well. So we can go into the acquire and then we can uh, go into here and we can set... Um, well, that's that's normal refresh mode, and then we can uh, actually go in here and actually set a uh, filter frequency. You'll see that it'll get cleaner and cleaner. This is applying a digital filter, and there we go. 900 hertz starting to get pretty clean now, but even with a 500 hertz filter on there, you can actually see that the 100 hertz is going to dominate. Let me freeze that. And you can see that the dominant frequency is around about 100 hertz there. So, yeah, but trust me, there is. Well, trust the FFT, there is a 300 hertz uh, frequency, which is the tuning fork tucked away in there somewhere. And just for kicks, I thought I'd film this at a thousand frames per second with my uh, Sony RX100. And you can actually see, here it is, a thousand frames per second. You see the sweep hand slowly moving like that. And you can see the two uh, cups on the end of the tuning fork there just vibrating in or out. <laughs> That's brilliant. And you can probably do the math on that if you uh, know that this is shot at a thousand frames per second into a 50 frames per second video. Hmm, go for it. Actually, looking at this high-speed footage, I'm not convinced that that's entirely 
smooth. Is my, are my coils not phased correctly for the battery or whatever? Hmm, I'm not sure. I have to get back to you on that. So I hope you enjoyed that look at this Belovo Accutron Space View 214, a classic watch from the 1960s. Not only just a classic, but a complete paradigm change in the technology used for, uh, you know, timepiece, uh, timekeeping, watch timekeeping like this. And it was used on many NASA uh, space missions and various things because it was the most accurate thing that they had available at the time. But yeah, yeah, it's like not much these days, but you can still marvel at the uh, the engineering that went into this and actually simplifying uh, the mechanical watch mechanism and just getting it more compact and simpler and immune to vibration and temperature and all and lubrication and maintenance and all sorts of stuff. It's absolutely stunning. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. Hi, welcome to Tear Down Tuesday. We've seen this one before. This was sent into the mailbag segment uh, recently by Chris Bowden from the Geek Group. So I'll link in the Geek Group down below. Thank you very much, Chris. He went to a lot of uh, expense and effort to uh, send this to us. And what it is, is it's an analog computer for an inertial navigation system, an astro compass uh, system used on the B-52 bomber. So let's check it out.